Welcome to our lecture online. Now for our third example, we're going to try to find the second moment of area with respect to this point P right there of that particular object. Well, if you draw some lines in between, you get a feel of how you can subdivide this into, well, square areas. So if you go like this, like this, like this, and like this, this then constitutes let me start over again. I'm just really mumbling and bumbling. Okay. Welcome to our lecture line. Our next example involves an object that is shaped kind of like a... Hmm. What is that shape? Okay. All right. Thank you. Try again. Welcome to our lecture line. Our third example, we're going to take this shape, this upside down U-shaped object, and try to find the second moment of area with respect to P. And you can see here how it's shaped and how you can actually divide it into six square regions of that particular object. Now to find the moment of area with respect to P, it's kind of like finding the moment, the second moment of area with respect to the origin, if you were to place the origin there. And what we're going to do then is realize that when we try to find, let's say, the moment of the second moment of area with respect to p this is equal to the sum of all the various pieces of that with respect to i sub x plus i sub y in other words we find the second moment of area with respect to x of each of these six areas and then we find the second moment of area with respect to the y-axis of each of those six areas that will allow us to find the second moment of area with respect to P if we imagine that we draw an XY axis where the origin is right there at that particular point. To do that, we then realize we're going to need to find the second moment of area of, a, of an area like that where the edge is on the axis and then we have to find it again where the edge is a distance A away from the axis. And it doesn't matter if the X or the Y axis because of the symmetry will get the exact same result with respect to the x-axis and with respect to the y-axis. So let's calculate these individually. So in this case, this is going to become a single integral of y squared, this is a distance from the axis, to the area element times the area element, which is a times dy. We can pull the a out and integrate this. So this is equal to, and of course, we're going to integrate from 0 to a. And so this becomes a times y cubed over 3 from 0 to a, which then becomes 1 third a to the fourth power. So that would be the second moment of area of one of those a by a square sections with respect to an axis when the side is right adjacent to the axis. And now we're going to do it again with the side a distance a away from the axis, and let's see what we get now. So in this case, this is equal to the single integral of y squared times the area element, which is again a times dy, but now we're going to integrate from a to 2a. So we'll get a, a larger value because it, the area is farther away from the axis. Again, it's all about finding the area distribution relative to an axis. So this becomes equal to a times y cubed over 3 evaluate it from a to 2a. Now that's a little bit more complex, so let's go ahead and do that. So this is equal to a times, and we can do divided by 3, a divided by 3, times when we plug in the upper limit, we get 2a cubed, which is 8a cubed, minus a cubed. So this becomes 7 cubed divided by 3 times a, or 7 third a to the fourth power. And so this is the second moment of area of an area element that's a distance a away from the axis. So now what we're going to realize here is that there's six different area sections. And so we're going to sum up all the moment of areas with respect to the x-axis of each of these, plus all the moment of areas with respect to the y-axis. So we should have the summation of 12 different segments. So this is going to be equal to the moment of area of each one of these relative to the x-axis, assuming, of course, that we can think of the x-axis being right over here. 
and then we're going to think of the y-axis as being right over here. It's going to be the y-axis. So notice that relative to the x-axis, I have one, two, three, four, five, six segments that are adjacent to the x-axis, which means I'm going to add six times this value for the total sum of all the second moment of areas with respect to the x-axis. So this is going to be six times one-third a to the fourth power. Plus, now relative to the y-axis, I have two of them that are adjacent to the y-axis, and four of them that are distance a away from the y-axis, which means I need two of these and four of these added together to form the sum of all the, moment, the second moment of variance relative to the y-axis. So this becomes the quantity two times, because I have two adjacent, two times one-third a to the fourth power, and plus four times, that would be, 7 thirds a to the fourth power, like this. So here I have 6 times 1 third, which is equal to 2 a to the fourth power, plus here I have 2 thirds plus 28 thirds, which is 30 thirds a to the fourth power, which is 2 a to the fourth plus 10 a to the fourth, which means that the total Second moment of area relative to point P is the sum of those two, or 12 a to the fourth. And so that's how you find the, moment of, the second moment of area of a conglomerate section of areas, in this case, six equivalent sections, each of an area of A by A. And that's how that's done.